Good morning and welcome to HOPE's online campus. My name is Ashley Black and I am the youth coordinator here at HOPE. I am so very glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. I wanted to encourage you to log in and to say hello in the chat box. That is a great place to connect with others this morning. And I also wanted to encourage you to feel free to check out all of the links on our online platform and see if they answer any questions you might have. And if there's something you can't find or something you need an answer to, you can also always ask your online host. That's why they're there and I know that they'll be more than happy to help you out this morning. And so now we're going to go join the band and spend some time in worship together. Hello, Hope Church. We're so glad you're joining us today. And even though we can't be together physically, we feel you. Wherever you are right now, sing out loud with us. Come on. Who am I that the highest king would welcome? But he brought me in Oh, his love for me Oh, his love for me Who the sun sets free Oh, is free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I Dick 
nations come lay them down at the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting there with open arms for God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever the power of hell whatever
your presence falling down I worship pouring out right here right now right here church. Amen. Amen. That is our prayer. Thank you, band, for leading us in worship. That right here, that right now, that our desire would be to meet with God. So we're going to continue in worship in a time of prayer together. And as we do that, I just invite you into a posture of prayer that you may have done before, maybe new for you. And so wherever you're gathered, I just invite you to uh, take your hands, maybe lay them on your lap, and open them up to heaven. As we lift up our praise, and as we receive God's grace, would you do that with me? God, we believe that you have made a way that right here, that right now, your presence falling down, your spirit is made a way for us to worship you, for us to be connected by you, for us to be changed in your presence that God we would be able to be your people by your grace and so though we are spread out physically God spiritually we are united today and we lift up our praises we open our hands we open our mouths we open our lives we Pour out our praise to you today, God, for you are worthy of all praise and all glory and all honor. You are the great God above all gods, above all things, above all people. You are the God of the universe, yet you are here with us today. We receive from you, God, with open hands, your grace forgiveness, your strength, your life. God, with open hands, we recognize how much we need you. Our lives continue to be in a season of disease and pandemic affecting our families and our work and our schools, our communities, our states, our nation, our world, and we need you. God, there are fires burning in California. There was a hurricane that came through Louisiana and other states. Are those in desperate need of you. We join with them, recognizing our need. We live in a nation, Lord, that continues, that continues to be broken in the ways that we relate to each other because of the color of our skin. 
We grieve, God. Surely this is not how it should be. So right here, right now, we lift up our request to you, God. In these moments of silence, Lord, hear our hearts as we cry out to you. And right here, right now, Jesus, you are with us. And so with open hands, we receive you once again to be our Savior, to be our leader, to be our comforter, to be our guide, that we would see you, that we would see you, God, above ourselves, above our world, that we would know you today. Amen. Good morning, Hope. My name is Heather Mandela, and I'm the pastor of Family Ministries here, and I am joined with Steve Hoadley, who is our pastor of worship. Uh, We are really excited to be here with you today to start our series on prayer. Yeah, we actually just concluded a series uh, in the book of James that uh, took us through most of the summer, and Pastor Jeff and I finished on prayer, so it's a great segue for us. And uh, we remembered that last week, if you were with us, and you can always check that out later online on YouTube or on our website, that, you know, prayer is a part of every part of life, whether we're dealing with hardships, whether we're celebrating, whether we're sick, prayer should be a part of our lives, and that there's power in prayer, that when we confess, we receive forgiveness, and we receive access to God, and that when we pray, He hears and listens, and there's power in those prayers. Absolutely, and it 
seems like it should be an easy thing, right? It seems like it should just be like breathing. And, and that is the goal. But ultimately, the reality is that there are often roadblocks. There are times when it can seem really difficult to pray, that we can struggle with it. And so we didn't want to go any further into this series without addressing what we thought were some fairly common roadblocks that either we've experienced or that we've heard relayed to us a lot over the years. And so um, we're going to start today by looking at the, the first roadblock, which is, I don't know what to say or even where to start. So this roadblock, I've heard a lot. Um, people will say, you know, listen to how they pray. Steve's prayer just now was so beautiful and eloquent. And when I pray, it's all mush mash and jumble, and I just don't have the words. And, um, and I want to reassure you that God is not looking for the perfect recipe of your words. That's not what it's all about. Okay. What God is looking for is your heart. In fact, um, in Matthew, he tells us right up front, he says, when you pray, don't babble on and on like the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them. For your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. You see, it's, it's not about how eloquent our words are or how well put together our thoughts come out. What it is about is our hearts. It is about an honest expression of what's going on inside of us. And it was making me think of a song that came out by Amy Grant a number of years ago. Um, and it, it, the song is Better Than a Hallelujah. Oh, and I love that song. Yeah, the whole premise of the song, right, is this idea that we have these put-together hallelujahs, these expressions of praise and thanksgiving, and, and they sound really good. But sometimes there are things that are even better to God's ears than a hallelujah. And she goes on to talk about um, a number of different expressions in the song uh, of emotion. And she says, you know, a mother's tears in the dead of night, the drunkard's cry, the woman holding on for life, the dying man giving up the fight, the tears of shame for what's been done, and the silence when the words won't come. And they are all better than the hallelujah. And I think she so captures the heart of God in this, in that what he is looking for is our raw emotion, what we are truly thinking and feeling. And the reality is that our prayers aren't always pretty. It's not always on our knees, by our bedside, with our hands folded. There are often times where our prayers are messy, like tears snot messy, where we don't even have the words. And that's where one of my absolutely favorite verses comes in. And in Romans, God, uh, God reminds us that this is going to happen and it's okay. He tells us that, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in a harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose for them. When you want to have an honest conversation with God, the Holy Spirit is there. Whether you have the words or not, he will intercede and God hears our hearts. So, okay, maybe you believe, yes, it doesn't have to be perfect and I'm good with that, but I still don't know how to start. Right? Well, we want to help you with that a little bit. In fact, if you've been around for uh, us for a little while, you've heard us talk about the prayer team and the prayer team email that goes out. Well, it is structured in a specific way for a reason, and I think it can be a great tool for those of us who don't always know where to start or how to start with our prayers. When you receive the email, you'll find the very first piece is a little bit of a devotional. So it's, it's reflections and thoughts. It's really that life application piece. So maybe it's asking you some poignant questions for some self-reflection. Or it, or it might just be reflecting on some scripture and how it's impacted us. Uh, but then we move on to scripture because we do believe that God reveals himself to us in the Bible. And so 
focusing on, meditating on scripture throughout prayer is always a great exercise. So you have that piece of scripture there for you. And then you have a written prayer, a prayer that we can all pray together. You know, sometimes I think we think that we shouldn't be reading prayers together or that a written prayer doesn't count. No, it absolutely does. It can be a great way to put words to things that we're not quite sure how to put our words around. For centuries earlier, really, that's how prayer was yeah, done right. yeah. in these collective written prayers. So um, feel free to read through that and know that God hears your heart in that. And then at the very bottom section, you'll see a series of personal prayer requests and these are coming from the hearts of our community. But it is also an opportunity for you to use your own words, to lift these things up in conversation with God in the way that is most comfortable for you. So if this would be helpful to you and you have not yet signed up, you can just email me, heather at meethope.org, and I'll be more than happy to get you connected with our, our daily prayer. Awesome. We definitely encourage you all to do that. It's a great way to find, as we're saying, space in your day for prayer. Our next roadblock maybe is something you've experienced or you've heard before. It is, I am too busy to pray. And we are certainly in a strange season of life. This COVID-19 pandemic has truly turned our schedules on end and... Um, well, I'm sure every day is, is, is somewhat new and somewhat different from what we could have expected the day before or certainly the year before. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's really important to take this time and not just be negatively affected by those changes of pace, but also maybe to, to do a reset on our clocks, to, to positively say, okay, what are the things that I need to accomplish in a day? The truth is, is that we're not too busy for some things, right? <laughs> if you have kids, you need to feed them. It's something that happens hopefully every day and you're not too busy for. We're not too busy to work. We have to work. We even probably find time to relax with the TV or something else. We, we you know, we find times for things. So why not prayer? Why does it seem so easy to not have time to pray. Often we sing a song that says, it's your breath, God, in our lungs, so we pour out your praise. Well, if God's breath is truly in our lungs, then why isn't prayer as simple as breathing, as consistent as breathing? Why isn't it a part of our day? See, prayer will shape the course of our lives. And that's because all life is rooted in Jesus. And our failure in prayer is really only failing not to pray. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. You know, another roadblock that I often hear um, is that I should only pray for the big stuff. Okay. Right? So um, I hear this a lot, like, okay, look around. You know, we've got the wildfires in California, and we've got um, chaos happening across the world. And, and the reality is these things are huge. And you know what? God's a busy guy. I don't want to bother him with the little stuff. You know, I don't necessarily think I need to tell him that my mom and I had a disagreement or, or that my, you know, my kid failed her algebra test or whatever it is. We tend to think that he can only handle the big stuff. But the reality is that if it's big enough for us to worry about, it's big enough for him to hear about. Yeah, that's right. God wants to be a part of all aspects of our lives. In fact, in uh, 1 Timothy, I really love the message interpretation of this. It tells us that the first thing I want you to do is pray. Pray every way you know how for everyone you know how. I love this for a lot of different reasons, but what jumps out at me is the first thing. It should be the first thing we do. The first thing we do in the morning, the first thing we do when confronted with a hardship, the first thing we do in the face of trial, the first thing we do in joy is a prayer to God. And I love that. I think that is such a great mindset to have. 
and to pray in every way that you know how and for everyone that you know how. There is nothing too small, and no way is insignificant. And um, so whether you choose to close your eyes and find a quiet space to pray, or whether you are journaling because you prefer to pray that way, or if you're like me, I like to pray in the car when there's no one else in there. I can turn off the radio and have some uh, uninterrupted time. And um, whatever way you like to pray, we just want to encourage you, just do it. You can do it. Put it first. You know, the other thing that God tells us is in Thessalonians, never stop praying. It's a constant dialogue with God. It's in all that we do. And I love this. So, so, you know, we're in the grocery store, right? And I'm walking down the aisle and I see enchiladas or maybe you're shopping on Instacart because you're not going in the grocery store right now. But whatever, whatever it is, you see something and it makes you think of someone else. So I see these enchiladas and I think, oh man, Lorita makes the best enchiladas. And I that can be a reminder to me. Oh, Lord God, thank you so much for her. And thank you for her husband and be with his foot. It's healing. You know, it can lead us to this constant dialogue that we're having with God. Things as simple as going to the grocery store. It develops a deeper relationship between us and Jesus. It's kind of like when you send your kids off to school and they come home and you say, hey, what'd you do today? And they say, nothing. You're like, I know you didn't do anything. I know something happened. Um, You just want them to tell you. And you don't care how insignificant it seems to them. You don't care if it seems trivial. You just want to be a part of it. And that's how God feels about us. There is nothing too insignificant. He just wants to be a part of it. Eugene Peterson says, Prayers are not tools for doing or getting, but for being and becoming. And the reality is, that's what it's all about. About being in the moment with God and becoming more like Jesus. Our next roadblock, we can get that on the screen, is... Wait a second. (laughs) Heather, did you put this in here? Not me. I'm a guy. Um, Yeah, it was my idea. Because (laughs) for some reason, I just want to take a few moments to talk to some of our audience today. Guys, why do we find it so hard to pray? In so many conversations that I have and hearing about guys with prayer, it's like, this is a serious issue. And in processing that, you know, maybe there's three things that kind of cause guys to have a hard time with prayer. One is, if we could just be honest, it's control. You know, uh, we feel like it's our job to provide. It's our job to protect, protect. It's our job to decide. And if we need to pray, well, then our pseudo sense of control really gets attacked that um, maybe we're not as in control as we really want to be. Another thing is what's already been said is words. You know, guys, we often use less words than women. That's okay. God is not looking for our perfect words. God is looking for your heart, man. And, and lastly, honestly, we just don't often like to ask for help. You know, <laughs> as guys, somehow, often many of us from an early age, we think that asking for help is a sign of weakness. Let's just be clear. Men, you need help. (laughs) I need help. We need help. We need to be able to ask God for help. So I just want to encourage us. Encourage us men. Be as consistent and as passionate as the women in your life are when it comes to prayer. Be men of prayer. Mm That's awesome. Thank you, Steve. Um, You know, the next thing that I hear a lot is somebody saying, I don't pray anymore because God doesn't hear my prayers. Um, And before I dive too much into this one, I want to lay a groundwork. And that groundwork is that God loves you. God loves you so much that he sent his son to die on a cross to pay for your sins, that we might live forever with him in heaven when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Now, I say that because if he loves you that much, I promise you he wants to hear your prayers. He wants you to pray to him. He is not ignoring you. We don't have to be perfect before we can pray. It's not something that we have to have figured out before we can enter into conversation with God. 
You know, sometimes people will say, I don't have enough faith to pray. But the Bible tells us that if we have faith, even as small as a mustard seed, we can say to that mountain, get up and move, and it will. It's an expression of the fact that even the smallest amount of faith is a huge, speaks to God's heart. And it is all that you need to start to pray. And so I want to encourage you, if, if Jesus is Lord of your life, you have the Holy Spirit living in you, and you have got a direct line to God at all times. You don't have to worry about not being heard. And I think so often what this really means when, they don't, when people say, God doesn't hear my prayers, what it really means is God didn't answer my prayer the way I wanted when I wanted you know, so often, if it doesn't happen right away or exactly how we thought, we figured it was wasted breath and God hasn't heard it. Now, if you've been around at Hope for any period of time, you've probably heard us say this before, but, you know, there's three main ways that God answers prayers. Yes, no, and wait. In my life, I most often hear wait. <laughs> it's rare that I hear right away, yes. Um, and certainly there have been times where the, what I have heard has been no. But the reality is that just because we don't hear his answer right away doesn't mean he hasn't heard our prayers. Mm. And, and I want to encourage you, if you're in a time where you are feel like you are in wait or you have heard a no, I want you to get in community with others. Because during these time periods, we often, our frustrations can keep us from seeing where God is moving. They can keep us feeling isolated and discouraged. But when we bring others around us during these times, they can encourage us and they can show us where they see God showing up in our lives. Kierkegaard said, the true relation in prayer is not when God hears what is prayed for, but when the praying person continues to pray until he is the one who hears, who hears what God is asking for. And so often that happens in the wait or in the no. It's tough. It's tough to understand the waits and the no's, the yeses. We feel like God has come through in those other responses, maybe not so much. Mm. And so our final roadblock during our time together that we wanted to lift up is, God, let me down. There may be some of us who have prayed. There may be some of us who have believed, who had faith, and things didn't turn out the way we thought that they would. Things didn't turn out the way that we had asked. Things didn't turn out even the way that we could even believe God wanted them to turn out. And so I just want to say that I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the pain and the disappointment that if this is you, you may be experiencing. That maybe your faith has turned to doubt. That God's will is mysterious. It truly is. You know, God says, pray, lift up your request to God. I'm going to hear you and give you the desires of your heart. And then when the answer is no, it leaves us confused. It leaves us wondering. It leaves us questioning. Uh, theologian Karl Barth spent almost his whole life thinking about things like this, he came to some conclusions. One is that God really is in ultimate control and that God's divine plan will be accomplished, but that God chooses and wants to use our prayers in that process. Often we're left with the, the question, why? It's 21 years ago today that my father-in-law passed away and went to be with Jesus. Jesus. We often then, and even still today, say, why? Why a good man? Why a godly man? Why a family man? Why? But often it is not the answer to the question why, because often we'll never be satisfied with that. But how we react to that question. 
is so more important than the answer. When we pray, we release our desires to God. We open our hearts and open our hands to his plan and surrender ours. And so a word for us today is to be persistent, to never give up. Persistence drives us towards God, to seek a deeper understanding and a deeper relationship, especially when we have those questions of why. That we want to know God, that we want to love God, that we want to believe he loves us even in those seasons. That it isn't what we receive from God, but it is the presence of God that we are searching. You know, sometimes in our prayer lives, we can turn our relationship with God into one of those machines where it's like full of toys and there's a claw inside and we just keep on depositing prayers. We keep on depositing prayers and we think that our desires are going to come up and be picked up and placed in our hands. That's not what our relationship with God is about. It's not about getting things. It's about getting God. And, and, and persistence changes us. Persistence changes the way we pray. Maybe we, we don't pray, God, bring my son back or change my son's heart. But maybe we pray, God, change my heart that I could continue to love my son, my daughter, my loved one in this difficult season of life. Not, God, give me that promotion. I know I deserve that promotion. Let that favor be for me. And God, give me that promotion. Maybe in the persistence, we change to, God, help me to be content in the place where you have planted me, in the work that I've been given to do. Paul needed to be persistent in his prayers. The apostle Paul prayed. He tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians that there was a thorn in his flesh and that he prayed, God, remove this from me. Take this from me, God. And God said, no. And here's what Paul's response is. But God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And going forward, for the sake of others then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I can't mention this verse without thinking of my mom. She battled a debilitating illness for most of her life that eventually took her life from this earth. And she would just mention that God's grace is sufficient for me. His power is made perfect in my weakness. And I thought about not even including this verse. In fact, it wasn't even what Heather and I talked about. We had another scripture plan, but late in the week, God just placed it upon my heart. And just to give you an illustration of how God often works, I opened up my email today and received that prayer prompt. And it was this same scripture that he had led on my heart to lift up for us today. If you think that God has let you down, please know that God is still persistent in his pursuit of you. He does not desire for you bitterness. He does not desire for you loneliness. He does not desire for you fear or anger. He desires to be with you, to walk through waiting, to be with you even in the no. And so our takeaway today is that in our prayer lives, we would just do it. Just do it. Keep on praying. Start praying. Just do it. We want to encourage you to take some time this week and really truly reflect on where you see prayer in your life. Why does it matter for you? Have that real honest discussion with God. 
And we wanna encourage you to, to create some space, both literally, literally and figuratively. It may help you to have a specific space in your home, or it may just be a carving out of your day where you need to be able to sit aside with God from the distractions of the world and talk to him. And we want to encourage you again, don't do it alone. We want to encourage you to sign up for the emails if that would be helpful to you, but to also gather your friends, family, pastors, people who are praying people around you. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Yep. But most importantly, just do it. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come before you as a people who want to be praying people. Our earnest desire, Lord, is to talk to you. And so, God, I ask that you would move through us with your Holy Spirit, that we might be able to hurdle those roadblocks that are in our lives, that we might be able to communicate with you as easily as breathing, that we might be praying continuously. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness, and thank you that you are always with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, Hope.